Good morning, everybody. It's Christian on a mission here with it today with another Bible study session. And today I'm going to be doing a Bridgepoint message from the series Happy, Happy, Happy. And I'm going to call this one, didn't really have a title for it, so I'm going to call this one The Ladder to Happiness. So I'm going to start off with the big idea here. The big idea is that God does not want us to seek happiness in our emotions, but in the plan he has for our lives. Meaning that we don't ha we shouldn't be dictating how we feel on just what's going on right now and what emotions we have, but what's going to come and what we have in store and what God has in store for us. So, and another thing I found yesterday is that happiness can be a choice. I'm not, you know, like, I said, like I said, it's not, I'm not talking about like the temporary feeling that we feel right now. I'm talking about the grand scheme of things and how we can truly be happy in God. That's a choice. Being happy in God is a choice because we choose to believe and we choose to accept God in our lives. And that's a choice. So let me tell you about something. All right. So Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 through 12. We all know this is called the Beatitudes. Now, I found something really interesting out yesterday too. I didn't really think about the Beatitudes until I really listened and to the message and I really looked at the word and I was like, oh my gosh, that makes a lot of sense. The be attitudes are attitudes to be in. <laughs> Which I know is probably pretty obvious to most of you and I'm just like, oh, that makes a lot of sense because I'm not very smart, am I? <laughs> I guess not. Apparently I didn't know, I didn't know that. So apparently I'm either just really, really stupid or really, really like unaware of what's going on in that word but I was like okay that makes a whole lot more sense and it's basically a thing that, that happy people blessed or happy are those who follow these simple things here these little attitudes so I'm going to go ahead and read them off at first and then I'm going to go back and pack, like unpack them for you guys so the first one it says Happy are those who are poor and realize their need for God. Basically, is what it is. the real. I'm going to post all the real actual verses in the annotations later. But that's what that one means. It, happy are those who are poor and realize their need for God. Meaning, happy are those who admit spiritually that they need God in their lives. That they can't do this alone. That they're not full of pride. They're willing to say, hey... I need help and I need God. Happy are those who can do that. And I'm going to call this little, we're going to start with four today and I'm going to do four tomorrow. We're going to call this little journey of happiness a spiritual ladder because that's what Tim compared it to. Basically the first rung, like you guys, everyone's scared of like, a lot of people are scared of heights, right? Like you're scared to climb up certain heights. Everyone gets that little tiny fear. And some of us are like, whatever, I don't, I'm not scared of heights. Well, we can all, as Christians, get scared of taking the steps that we need to in order to be better Christians. So, taking the step on the ladder to happiness could be scary sometimes because you don't really know what's going to happen. What if the ladder tips over? What if you fall? What if, what if everything goes south from there? Well, I can't promise you. Well, I can't promise you, actually. I can promise you that through Christ, you will have difficulty, but he will get you through there. And he will be there for you no matter what. So when you go on that ladder, that first wrong, the first wrong is accepting the fact that, hey, you need God in your life. And that's the first step. Second one, happy are those who mourn, they will be comforted. And you're like, that doesn't make any sense. How can someone be happy if they're upset, if they're crying, if they're mourning something? Well, I think it means more of mourning your sin. Grieving what you've done. Grieving that you have been a poor Christ follower, that you haven't really done what you're supposed to do. Grieving your sin is what I think the mourning is talking about. And happier are those who mourn the sin, because once you mourn the sin, you can accept the fact that, hey, I'm a sinner. And then you can move up to the next step. Happier are those who are humble, for they will inherit the earth. Humble meaning, look, I am just a person. I'm not anything more than just a person. But God, the Holy Spirit, is in me. 
And if I just let him have my life, if I just give him control of what I have in my life, if I can just do that, then maybe things will turn out better. And they will. I promise you they will. If you give God control in your life, he will take it and he will shape it into something amazing. Then we have the next one. Happy are those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness, for they will receive their righteousness. What does that mean, hungry for righteousness? I think it just means the desire, once you admit that you need God, once you admit that you have sin in your life, once you give Jesus control of your life, you will have the desire and you will be able to do the right thing in your life. And I have experienced that personally. Like, I have this passion inside me to do this kind of stuff for you guys now. I want to spread the message. I want people to know God. I want to do the right thing as a Christian. And I'm trying really, really hard. And this just kind of came out of accepting these things. I'm just like, all right, look. Obviously, I can't just help without God. I can't. It's not, it's not possible. Obviously, I have a sin problem. And I need to fix it. And I need to have, I need to have God fix it. Obviously, that I'm, I can't really control everything that happens in my life. I can't. So I got to give God control. And now I have this desire in me to help other people reach the same place I have. Because I'm still struggling with depression, but I, in my God relationship, in my relationship with God, in my relationship with others, I am happy. I am. I realized that yesterday, too, and I was just singing and having a great time yesterday night, and it, it was awesome. So that's, that's the last step of the ladder on that part. I'm going to go ahead and read the other four verses, but I'm not going to unpack them yet because I haven't watched the second half of this message yet. But I'll go ahead and read them. So after the hungry, it says, Happy are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Okay. That's pretty cool. I mean, if you're willing to forgive and willing to just let things go, then that would probably make you happy. Happy are the pure of heart, for they will see God. Meaning, I guess, that you are willing to get rid of all the malice and ungodly things in your life. Like, cause I gotta watch the other series, I don't really know yet. Happy are those who work for peace, for they will be children of God. Working for peace, meaning stepping up in your community, I guess, and trying to make things better, and trying to do good things and helpful things. That will definitely make you children of God. Happy are those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. That's something that we Christians are struggling with today, especially in Syria and other places around the world. We are persecuted for believing in Jesus, but it doesn't matter because when we go to heaven, we'll get the ultimate reward, and that's pretty awesome. Happy are those people when they, they mock you and persecute you and lie to you and slander against you because you are Christ followers. Because you... You follow the one true king. You follow God. Those are people. He's God. He's he's the head honcho. He is the head, head you know, whatever, Katino, whatever you want to call that word. I don't know what it is. Anyway, he's the big guy. He's the guy that we all need to follow. And just because people are like, oh my gosh, you follow that guy? Well, yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> he's God. You're, you should be, we're happy about that. We, we should be happy and glad for a great reward way to in heaven. So today, I just kind of, I really mainly focused on the four outward, or I'm sorry, inward expressions. And once you focus on the inward, the outward will come out. It will express itself. It will be manifested once you've taken care of the inward feelings. The vast majority of us is afraid to, of spiritual heights. We're just afraid of the ladder. But we can climb the ladder. We can. So we have to be spiritually broke spiritually busted spiritually bankrupt and spiritually just this is what should be poor once we do that we can grieve our sin we can truly grieve it we can realize that God is in control of our lives and then we will have the desire to do the right thing we can have that desire. We will allow that desire into our hearts to do the right thing because we know it's there. It really is. And once we do the right thing, we are happy. 
And that's those are the four first steps of being happiness in detail. So I'm going to go inside and I'm going to get ready to shoot my day because it's Thursday and everything's going to be <laughs> tons of fun on Thursday. It always is. But thank you guys so much for watching. And if you like this, please like, comment, or subscribe to see more. And please help me out with this. I've actually posted on Facebook already that I need help with these new theme ideas for my own Bible study sessions because I keep using Tim's and I kind of feel bad. But I'm going to go ahead and try to think of some ideas and I need you guys to help me too. So have a great day and as always, Jesus loves you.